Hey there guys, Virtus here and welcome back to today's episode of the Adobe Muse Quick Start Guide. In today's video, we are going to be working on the content for our website. Having said that, we'll be setting up things like text and images. In addition to that, we're also going to be going over a few further website properties, setting up things like page fill, link colors, and even setting up little things like a favorites icon. So there's loads to cover, so let's just go ahead and dive in and get started. First thing that you'll want to do before we start creating any content is to save the website and make sure we have a project folder so that we can easily find content for our website later on and to make sure the website doesn't need to externally reference any images or alike later down the line, which can cause a whole lot of issues. What I mean by that is when the website is uploaded to the internet, it simply won't have access to the images in the deepest, darkest parts of your hard drive and will simply not display them. Instead, you have to, you have to upload the image with the website inside of a project folder. So, go ahead and create a project for your website, anywhere you like. For me, this is going to be on my desktop and I'm just going to call it Muse Website. From here, open that up and make another folder called Content. We'll be putting all of our images and other content the website needs inside of here. Once you've done that, jump back into Adobe Muse and go to File and press Save Website As. Navigate to your new folder and just press Save. That will save the project and all of the information for each page in a way that the software can read and use to set up your planning, graphical view, and so on. That's all set up for now. So let's move on to the next thing I want to discuss, which is site properties. After you create your website, there's a few options you can play around with to further adjust your website. If you go to file and hit site properties, you'll see a screen you should be familiar with from the third episode, which is the layout stuff we set up covering things like page width, mar margins, and so on. Within the screen, you now also have the option to adjust content properties. So go ahead and click content at the top of the window and you'll see exactly what we can change. From here we can change link styles, scroll bar options and even your favorite icon. There's even an option to automatically convert opaque PNGs to JPEG images. With this ticked, it will automatically change any PNG files without transparency to a JPEG to save space and reduce loading times. The only time you want to turn this off is when you're intentionally using high quality PNG files because you don't want the compression found from JPEG images. I'll leave this on for now as we're not really going to be working with any high quality images. Now then, as for your scroll bars, you have the option to turn off scroll bars when you don't need them, or you could also have them on all of the time and you can adjust that for both horizontal and vertical scrolling. We'll just leave this is at the moment, set it automatic now as you know that works quite well. Above this, you can also set your default link style for hyperlinks within your project. You have four different states, normal, hover, visited and active. You can change the color for each of these. For example, if you don't want the links to be blue when hovered over, click it and choose your desired color. You can also choose whether or not you want each state to have a unique text style, such as underlined or italic. Just click through the options to get the desired look you want. You can also create additional link styles using the little icon below the list. For now, we'll leave all of these as they, as they are, as I prefer to change each link individually within the design. Lastly, you can set a favorite a fav icon, a, a, sorry, a fav icon, that little image you have in the tab view in your browser. You'll need to set up an image for this a little later on. If you look at YouTube, you'll see that you have a little play button in the tab section. That's your fav icon. We'll also leave the advanced stuff for now as it's not too important. Change is bound to happen and I just wanted to make sure you know how to adjust your settings accordingly. Now we have our content folder and settings are all good to go, so we'll quickly show you how to add basic text and images to your website. Inside of your design view, just go and hit the T for text icon on the left hand side and we'll make some text. It couldn't be simpler. Just go ahead and click, the dra and, click and drag to create your text box. From there you can just type in whatever you want on your website and adjust the styling in the menu bar above. We'll go over that in a little bit more detail later on though. As for placing images, chuck an image into your content folder, anything will do. If you have your project files, why not try the banner for our website? Make sure you're placing it into the home page and then inside of Muse go to file, place and navigate to the file you're trying to place into your website. Press OK and then once again just click 
and drag to place it. After that you can click the item and rescale it using the transformation points. Let's go ahead and see how that looks in our preview mode. You can see what we've got up, you can see we've now got a banner just below the header area and a little bit of text just below that. Everything is looking good and I think this is a great place to end the video. Experiment with some of the styling options you have for text to see what you can come up with and in the next video we'll be going over using layers inside of Adobe Muse. Once again, thanks for watching and as always, share the video, smack that like button and as always, keep on creating.